Now, splines work very similarly to polylines. Let's move down here. These objects here are splines. They're curved, they're tangential to each other. And yes, that is hard for me to say. And you can do things with them that you can't really do with a polyline. I can change how the vertices control how the spline is displayed with this grip arrow here. I can make them fit, meaning that the splines go directly through the control points, or I use a box and it makes it more of a filleted type of control. So I can grip edit any of these and move them around. And it creates like a parabolic curve between the two lines here. If I set it back to fit, wherever I move this grip point to, the spline will follow. Now to create a spline, you just type in the word spline. Press enter, pick your first point, and then your second. And as you create your points, you'll see the curve is affected. Because the spline is controlled not by the vertices, but by the lines between the vertices. And it arcs it accordingly. Now to close this, I'm just going to type in CL, press enter, and then it will process that curve. Now you can see these nodes here are exactly the same, to be quite honest. When you use a pline you know, or a polyline, you get point to point. When you use a spline, it's curved. Now I can come in here and select this polyline, and then I can change these from lines to arcs. But it's a point to point arc, it's not tangent at all. I can even use the pedit command to curve my polyline if I the spline command here, it curves it. But you can see, it doesn't quite look the same. It works differently. It processes that differently. And it keeps it as a 2D polyline. So now I can select this polyline and decurve it, put it back to the way it was. Now a spline, on the other hand, when I select it, works a little bit differently. I don't have all of those options that I did with the polyline. So you have a little bit less control, but you do have some similar ones. I can stretch it, I can add another point, or I can remove it. So that's nice. That speeds up the editing process again for a spline. And if you want to edit a spline, type in spline edit, just like in pedit. Select it. You can get to your fit data or edit a vertex. You can convert it to a polyline. And if you go to do that, be careful with it because you have to create a specific precision setting. And it defaults to 10. And when I do that, I'll show you what happens. What it does is the polyline can't make the big sinuous curves like a spline can. So it will create line segments. And that accuracy setting that you use will define how many segments it's going to use, you know, or how the distance between vertices. The higher the number, the more it's going to put in. So the more accurate it's going to look when you generate the drawing, it will be more curved because it will have more segments that are shorter. So it's easier to make those small curves, etc. The spline edit and the polyline edit, or P edit, commands, you don't have to use them as much anymore to make the uh, display changes to them. You're going to use those two editing commands for those specific types of objects when you want to convert them or when you want to join them you know, or add width, etc.